Hi and welcome. My name is Julianne Koss and in today's episode of The Complete Picture, we're going to be talking about how you can create a watermark and apply it to all of your images in Lightroom. So there's a, there's a variety of ways you can do this. If you simply want to add some text, that's very, very easy to do and we'll take a look at that method in a minute. But in the meantime, I want to show you two other ways that you can do this. Um, it will require uh, that you jump over into Photoshop, but then we can create watermarks that have transparency in them. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to select this image first and use Command E or Control E to edit the original. And I'm editing the original because this is a layered Photoshop document. Very similar to the one that I created in the last episode for creating transparent overlays in Photoshop. You can see that I have a shape layer that has the copyright symbol on it. I have a text layer with my name and the date and I have another shape layer that is the underline. Now I've got them appearing against a black background right now because it's all white text and it was hard to see. So let's go ahead and um, we can add some effects. And I've added some effects to this first layer. The, the way I did that is just by using the effects icon and coming down and adding a drop shadow and adding an outer glow. And I don't really need to walk through that. What I did want to point out, because I'm not sure if people know this shortcut or not, is you can go ahead and hold down the Option key or the Alt key on Windows and just drag your effects from one layer to another to quickly copy the same effects. If you have a ton of layers, like maybe 20 layers, you can also right mouse click and you can copy your layer styles and then select all of the rest of the layers and then you can paste your layer style. But we don't need to go into all of that right now. What I just wanted to show you is what we now have are three layers that all have transparency and if we hide this background layer you can see that in fact we've got that checkerboard. So this is the file that I want to use in Lightroom. But if I save it as a JPEG file or as a PSD file, well, if I save it as a JPEG file, um, we're not going to have transparency. And if I save it as a PSD file, Lightroom actually can't use that as a watermark. What I need to do is just a quick file save as, and I need to choose PNG as my file format. As long as I've selected PNG, then I can retain that transparency. So let's go ahead and save this as new um, logo watermark. I already have a bunch of other watermarks. So I'm just going to save this on my desktop and then click Save. So that's the first way that we can create from a vector graphic, we can create a transparent watermark to use in Lightroom. The other way that we can do this, and let's go back to Lightroom and look at the second file. This is just uh, my signature on some paper. If I wanted to use this, let's just quickly edit this using Command E, I'm going to edit the original in Photoshop. What I need to do is I need to get rid of all of that white textury paper right here. And I could go in and, and use the magic wand tool and try to select it and then delete it, but I really have an easier method and that is simply to turn the background into a layer. And I'll just hold down the Option key as I double click it because that will turn it into a layer without bringing up a dialog box. And then I'm going to use the blending options right down here at the bottom where it says blend if this layer is white. Well, it doesn't say white, but I'm going to choose this white triangle. And as I move it to the left, you can see all that white disappears. Now, if we zoom in, we might be able to see a little bit of white and you would notice that this is very abrupt. In fact, let's take it way over so I can show you what I mean. See how it's kind of abrupt, which is kind of a cool look if you're actually trying to get that look. But if you want a little bit smoother transition between the values, and you can see the values here going from black to white. If you want a smoother transition between the values that can be seen 100%, which would be these values in between the two triangles, and then all the values that you can't see at all, which would be everything to the right, you just hold down the Option key and click in the triangle and you can split it. And as we split this, you'll now see that this is kind of the fade area. So these values, the black values, we can see 100% in our image. These areas going from dark gray to kind of your mid-tones, we're now slowly hiding those values as they get lighter. And then anything on the right-hand side of this triangle, we can't see at all. So that's kind of a nice way to um, make the transition between what you can see, the black, and what you can't see, these values here, a little bit softer. All right, so I would just do that and then save this file. And we could save this image as a PNG as well. And we'll just save it to the desktop as PNG. Oh, I can tell by the list of formats that this is a 
This is actually a 16-bit image. It doesn't really matter, but I don't need it as 16-bit. It's nice that Photoshop gives me the ability to save as a PNG as well as a JPEG file, even though the file formats don't actually support 16-bit. So I'll click Save, click OK again, and let's head back to Lightroom. OK, now the great thing in Lightroom is that no matter what module you want to use the watermarking in, if you set up a watermark, it's going to be available in all of the modules. So whether you're exporting files, whether you're using a published services, whether you're in slideshow, print, or web, they can always access the same list of watermarks. So it doesn't matter where you set it up. Probably the easiest place is just under the Lightroom menu on the Mac or under your Edit menu on Windows. Just come down to Edit Watermarks. So the first option, this watermark style, I mentioned in the very uh, introduction of this that you could just add any text. It doesn't have to be a graphic. You don't have to use a graphic. Oh, this is a little weird that it's showing me this on my signature. Hold on. I'm going to cancel and click just on a different image. That way, when we go back into Lightroom and to edit watermarks, we'll be able to see the watermark on the image, and it's not as confusing. So here, I've got my style set to text, and that's why we just have some text right here. And we could, we could write anything we want. We could write all rights reserved anything you want, and that just becomes a very simple text watermark. And we can change the inset, so if I wanted to move it in a little bit and lift it off the bottom, I could kind of move it into the image. I can anchor it from a variety of different locations. I can go ahead and rotate this if I want to make it appear, you know, on the left or right side and kind of have it be um, scrolling up the side. I can change the size. Right now I have it proportional, but you could change it to fit or fill. And we can change the opacity as well if we just want to make that a little bit more subtle. We can also go up here and change all of the different text options like your font and the style and the, the shadows. But we don't need to go into that. I'm sure you can explore that on your own. When you're finished setting up your text or graphic watermark, all you do is you save that current setting as a new preset. So this will be um, my logo and J cost and I'll just put um, all rights reserved. Okay. So let's go ahead and hit create and that becomes part of this list accessible to any of the modules that support the watermarking. Now let's go over to the graphic area. We'll click on graphic. It's going to ask me to choose a file. So let's just go directly to my desktop. Here's the signature file and here's the new logo watermark. So we can select either one of those. Click choose. In this case, I don't want it rotated and I'm going to anchor it in the left corner. We can scale it up and make it larger or smaller. And again, we have all of the same watermark effects that we saw before. Once I've got it the way I like it, we'll go ahead and save this as a new preset. This will be my uh, copyright logo graphic. And we'll go ahead and hit create. And finally, we can add another graphic by simply clicking the Choose button, going back and finding my signature, clicking Choose, and then again, setting up any parameters. This case, I want to make it a little bit darker so we can really see that. Still do want to make it a little bit smaller. And that's fine for now. Again, we'll go up and we'll just save this as a new preset. This will be Black Signature. And hit Create. Okay, once we're finished creating these watermarks, we can click Done. And then if we move over, for example, to the slideshow area, you'll notice right down here in the overlay panel, we've got the ability to watermark. And I can select from that list. So here are the three that I just made, the JCost ARR, the black signature, and the copyright logo graphic. We can choose from any of those. If I move over into the print module, What's really nice about this is that not only can I select the watermark, so here underneath the page area, if I just scroll down, here's my watermarking. We can go ahead and select any watermark. And if I select more than one image, we can see it come up in both windows there. So I can select the watermark here, but let's actually go up and select a different template. Just for one moment, we'll go just to the Lightroom templates and we'll get some images that are some different sizes here. And these are overlapping, so let's just pull those over here for right now and return back down to the watermarking area. We'll turn that on and we'll add our watermark. 
and you can see, well, it's rather faint here. Let me pick one that's a little bit stronger. Because I set up the watermark to be proportional, on the larger images, I've actually got a larger watermark than I do on the smaller images. And the same thing will happen in the web module. And the same thing will happen when I export, or if I'm under here under the library area, and we come down to our published services. If I have a published service that includes a watermark, we can add it there as well. And of course, both of those options are just the same. They look very much the same. They're just in the export area here. If we scroll down, you can see there's watermarking. And if we turn that on, well, that's provided that we're saving out to a file format like JPEG or PSD or TIFF. If we turn on our watermarking, there we can see all of our watermarks. Excellent. So you can see how easy it is once you've created your graphics with your transparency in Photoshop to select those images in Lightroom and define them as watermarks to apply to all of your images. My name is Julianne Cost. Thanks for joining me on this episode of The Complete Picture. <laughs>